It is 6.30 in the morning. But in Texas, this is the best time of day to get going. If you missed part one or part two of the fence building series, and I have left you links to both in the description below. This week I got started on building the boxes that will go around the steel post. And to do this, I am gonna be using three pickets per post. Now the brackets used to hold the panels to the post actually will extend past the width of the boxes that I'm gonna be building. So the first thing I did was grab some brown spray paint and paint all of the brackets. And to make the step a little bit easier, I cut out a template out of some cardboard. Now we were thinking of a few different ways on how to attach the pickets to the steel post. And we decided to use self-tapping screws to go directly into the side. However, it was way too much of a bear to try to drive in the screws with, without pre-drilling first. So I would hold the picket in place, pre-drill through the wood and make a mark on the steel post on where the screw needed to go in. Then I would set the picket aside, finish drilling the hole, then set the picket back into place and drive in the self-tapping screw. This method was a little time consuming, but it definitely worked well. The picket felt rock steady on that post. After I got done with one side, I would repeat for the other. To finish the box off, I came back with a third picket. I used something flat, a speed square in my case, to make sure that it was in line with the two side pickets. Then I used a little bit of construction adhesive and my brad nailer to attach it permanently. The next thing I got started on was cutting all of the top caps to go on top of each box and I set up a stop lock at the miter so I can make these repetitive cuts go quickly. Then I turn my miter to 45 degrees and cut off what will be the front two corners. To make sure that they all came out identical, I would line up the two by eight corner with the edge of my miter saw fence before making the cut. Then I was able to start attaching it to the boxes. And to attach it to the box, I'm gonna to be toenailing in two screws on the top side since you won't ever be able to see the top. And to make this step easier, I would first pre-drill the hole. This makes it easier not only to run in the screw, but also prevents cracking. Feels good. So next I started adding the trim, which is of course completely customizable. I have quite a few pickets left over that didn't make the cut for going on the fence because of things like this or things like this. So I'm gonna use these to make the trim for the posts. So I would use just a few dabs of construction adhesive and then my brad nailer to attach them. And since all of the boxes are the same measurement, you can set up a stop block at the motor saw and make a huge stack of each cut. That way you can very quickly just throw on each piece as needed. I would start off by adding the back trim, which is a little bit taller, and then come back and add the top trim, which is a little bit shorter. And of course, just my opinion, but I think that these three components give all of the boxes a bold, but I don't know, an elegant look. Cody's brother was cool enough to come give us a hand for the day, so we divided it and conquered. Cody would go through and attach the two side pickets to the steel post. Willie would come back and add that front picket on, and then I would come back and do the top cap and trim. So the last thing I'm gonna be doing for these boxes is going through and applying a, a product called Fence Armor. This is just a small, low-profile metal bracket that slips onto the bottom of the post to protect it from getting eaten up from a weed eater. It connects to the post with just one simple screw, and this way we can come through here and not worry about the, the wood on the post boxes getting chewed up over time. Now, of course, I went with brown since I have a brown stand on mine, but they do come in all different sorts of styles and colors, so if you're interested, I'll leave you a link below. Okay, moving on to the final step, building a gate. The first thing I did was grab the 2x4s and cut the four joints that will make up the frame. Now I decided to use half lap joints just because of the strength that they give. Now since I have a table saw and a dado stack, that's how I cut in the half laps. However, if you don't have these tools, then you could also do this joint with a circular saw and a chisel. And I'll leave you a link in the description below where you can see an example of that. To attach these joints together, I'm using Type Bond 3 since it is rated for outdoor use, and then four screws per joint. I also use these right angle jigs just to make sure the corners were nice and square before actually attaching it. So this diagonal support's really important because what it does is it transfers the load from the top unhinged corner to the bottom hinge corner. So before setting this, uh, the support in place, get the orientation of what's gonna be the top and bottom of the frame and then also what's gonna be the hinged and unhinged side. By running this diagonal member correctly, it'll prevent sagging over time. Now the only reason I'm using a two by six for my diagonal here is because I ran out of two by fours. To attach it to the frame, I use glue and three nails per side. Once again, just pre-drilling these to make it a little easier. 
If you have a pocket hole jig, you could also use that. Now, when building out this side of the fence, we left the top cap as one solid unit so that we could attach the frame to the top cap and not have to continuously wrestle with it to finish out this side. But you can see I can, I can remove the clamp and it's now set in place. I ended up attaching some center horizontal members so that later whenever attaching the hinges, I would have some good meat to go into. Okay, so a small hiccup. I mean, just a lesson learned since this is the first time doing a fence, but whenever building this section out, it would have been much smarter to start here and work our way that way. Instead, we built up to this point and then now we're trying to fill it in and it's just not lining up. So we're just having to do what we can in order to make it look seamless. And to do that, I ended up just having to fudge the placement of the pickets and break from the standard spacing that I had been using. So I ended up fudging a few pickets right here on the left, but then spacing normal across the span of the gate and then fudging just slightly on the right. So some of the spacing directly to the left and right is a little bit narrower, but really after everything was said and done, I think it's one of those things that if you're not really looking for it, then you don't notice it. And I'm pretty happy with the way that it turned out. Okay, now on to mounting the hinges. Now these hinges are attached using lag bolts and they need good meat to go into, but some of the holes fell on the space in between pickets. So we traced out the hinges on a picket and then cut it out using a bandsaw. You could also use a jigsaw and then attached it to the fence right underneath the hinge. Okay, almost done. Now at this point, the gate still is just one solid wall. So I moved up to the top with the circular saw and made one diagonal cut in order to break it loose. Now, even with that one cut done, the gate still won't open freely because the top cap interferes. So two relief cuts over on the hinge side need to be made so that it has a, the ability to swing all the way open. I used a circular saw to cut out the bulk of the material for these relief cuts, then used my multi-tool to cut out the remainder. Okay, now at this point, the gate should open freely. That is a sigh of relief. So I'm calling this project a wrap. This was a really fun, but huge project. None of the steps are technically difficult. It's just the sheer size of the project that makes it difficult. So my advice to you, if you're looking to replace your fence is to schedule it out to where you can take your time with the project and not get overwhelmed with the process. Now I do have a full cost breakdown of the entire project on my website and I'll link to my website, the tools I use, the materials are all in the, the description below for you. So I hope that you enjoyed this three part series and I will see you the next time I'm working on something.